In the previous videos, we talked about pressures, effective pressures and absolute pressures. When we're dealing with absolute pressures, we emphasize it, the absolute pressure. Especially when the topic is gases transformations, we must use absolute pressures. It's important to keep this in mind. In this video, we'll see how to deal with some practical applications concerning effective pressures or pressures. Let's start with this one. The water used by an industrial plant is pumped to a main reservoir. The maximum water level elevation inside it is 450 meters. Then it's sent to an intermediary reservoir. Both have their water surfaces exposed to the atmosphere. The last reservoir supplies a fire hydrant, which is at the elevation 430 meters. What are the pressures at the pump and at the fire hydrant expressed in pascals? Piece of cake. The pressure at the downstream extremity of the pipe equals zero. The height difference between the pump and the downstream extremity equals 50 meters and the water specific weight equals 10,000 newtons per cubic meter. The pressure at the pump will be 500,000 pascals or 0.5 megapascals. Let's do the same for the hydrant. The pressure at the upstream extremity of the pipe equals zero. The height difference between the hydrant and the upstream extremity equals 15 meters and the water specific weight equals 10,000 newtons per cubic meter. The pressure at the fire hydrant will be 150,000 pascals or 0.15 megapascals. Let's look at another example. To determine the altitude of the lowest point of a transmission pipe that supplies water for a city, its downstream valve was closed. The pressure indicated by the gauge was 0.45 megapascals. The water level elevation at the upstream extremity was 385 meters. What is the desired altitude? That's easy to find because we know that this relationship holds. So, this will be the value that we are looking for. As we know the value of P and the water specific weight, we can find the corresponding piezometric head and substitute in the equation. And here is the elevation that we wanted to find, 340 meters. It's so easy! Let's do another one. This figure shows a vessel containing three different fluids. There is also a gauge indicating the pressure at its top. What will be the pressure at its bottom? Piece of cake too! The specific weight of the air is negligible, so we can assume that the pressure at the air-oil interface is the same shown by the gauge. If the specific weight of the water equals 10,000 newtons per cubic meter, then the specific weight of the oil will be 8,500 newtons per cubic meter. Now we can write this relation and find the pressure that we wanted in pascals and in kilopascals. One more, the last one. The figure shows a pneumatic caisson installed in a river. What will be the pressure inside it that will keep it dry for the excavation work? But first, let's explain how it works. Here it is inside the river. We'll use it to excavate the bottom of the river, where we'll make the foundation of a bridge. So, we'll fill it with compressed air. To ensure that the column will be dry, this is the pressure that we'll need, which we can write like this. As we know the specific weight of the water, we can substitute the values and find the pressure in pascals or in megapascals or the equivalent pressure height in water meters. Now, the workers can go inside the upper chamber one by one. Let's fill it with compressed air until it reaches the pressure of the inferior chamber. Then the door will open by itself. The digging work can be done and the bucket containing the removed earth is sent to the upper chamber. Then the door is closed 
and the pressure can be released, so the excavated earth can be removed. We do it all again. Close the external door, fill the chamber with compressed air, and the digging work continues. Of course, this kind of work can be harmful to your health. The workers have special equipment to get the job done. Also, security conditions are very important to be observed. When compressed air is injected in the superior chamber, these bolts have great responsibility. If they fail, the superior chamber can be converted in a spaceship or something to the stars and beyond. Well, not exactly. These stars and planets are all the workers will see. This I can assure you. And so, we carry on with our Fluid Mechanics 101 course. As I told you, it's fun! In our next video, we'll talk about the relative equilibrium of liquids, which is a very important topic in fluid mechanics. See you there! Oh, and if you like this video, don't forget to give it a like, comment, share and subscribe. Hit the bell so you can be notified of my next videos.